training program. Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Coach Velma. I'm the owner here of Elemental Fit Lab. I'm a CrossFit Level 3, um, which is four designations when it comes to CrossFit. And part of learning your level three is that you have to get to know all of the different demographics of coaching, right? So we've got little kids, adults, and then we, then we have what we call a, consider a master's athlete. So a master's athlete is technically somebody who is 35 and up. All right, I know, yeah. It's crazy because we kind of forget that that is like a thing, 35 and up, some things just change. And we're gonna define what that looks like. We're gonna talk about why it's important to stay active as you age. And then we're gonna talk about how to set some reasonable goals, some dispel some common myths, and then talk about really this I think is the big one, that poor recovery feedback loop, which as we get older, we have to prioritize our recovery because it's much easier. Here you go, Mike. You don't have to pull it. Oh, thanks. There you go. It's much easier to recover when you're in your early 20s and 30s than it is once you hit your 30s and for mid 30s and 40s. So we're gonna start, as you can see, this guy is like highlighted out the yin yang. So, it is the effects of a sedentary lifestyle, not age. So that's really important, a sedentary lifestyle, not age, that causes functional declining illness, quality of life is significantly better for those who remain fit and active throughout the course of their lifespan. That is a cited study on here. So it's important that you guys stay active as you age. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? And so you wanna stay active as long as possible. Um, the thing with CrossFit, people see your high-level athletes, your folks who are snatching and cleaning 300 pounds, and we forget 99% of us are here just to live a fun more functional life. We work all these years to have a nice retirement, and then we can't do anything because we didn't take care of our bodies. And so as a coach and an affiliate owner, my goal is to help you guys maximize your later years in life. I want you to stay active so that you guys are able to do the things that you want to do in your, re in your retirement. Um, so successful aging can be defined as a late life process change characterized by high physical, psychological, cognitive, and very important, social functioning. That's one of the beauties of what we do here is it's a very social environment. You guys get to, I would have never met Mike or Sook or Kirsten if it wasn't, or Yvonne, like some of my closest friends I would never have met or Nicole if it wasn't for CrossFit. And that social component is so important. We forget like we play mom, husband, wife, father, worker, our identity. What is that outside of what you do every day? And that's the cool thing about what we do here. So, as we all know, not two athletes are not the same. They could grow up the exact same way, they're put together differently, they have different goals, they have different lifestyles. So this is something that I really liked and I feel like should be a regular conversation when it comes to training, regardless of whether you're a master's athlete or not. So, what are your goals, all right? What's your current fitness level and what was your fitness level in the past? your age, obviously that does play a role in what we do here, and also your injury state. So we're gonna break these four things down and it's something to think about, like maybe setting some goals moving on in the future. So are you motivated by, in terms of goals, performance or wellness? Do you wanna compete? Is that something that you're even interested in? Or do you wanna just be functionally fit and be able to enjoy your retirement? That's important. Or be able to enjoy just life in general, being fit, being able to go kayaking with your friends, okay? Other things to think of. Are you focused on competing or is this more of a social thing for you? Is this just like a fun group activity that you get to do once a week? Or not once a week, Jesus, don't do that. You need like three to five days a week. Um, do you like to win? Are you competitive? For some people, it's just here. This is a check mark and that's okay. You don't have to be a competitive athlete to reap the benefits of what we do here. And then if you do want to win, are you training towards something specific? So if you're telling me that you want to be a competitive athlete, but you don't have any goals about where you want to go with it, that's really hard for me to help you, okay? Um, your fitness level, are you able to do the workouts as written? Does that even interest you? Or are you just here to get a good workout? Um, have you been active? Were you an athlete in the past? Did you play sports in high school and college? Those things are important because the fitness background of somebody who's been active in their, their entire lives is gonna to be totally different than somebody who's never been active before. Do you have a history of exercise? For most people, no one's ever done CrossFit before, okay? People come in and they think they have to be in shape to do this, they don't. But there are certain courses that we take depending on whether or not you've been active in your life, 
okay? One of my favorite clients, um, she no longer comes here because she moved to the villages, but she rollerbladed her entire life. She was a competitive figure skater, which is pretty cool. Um, and it was really cool working with her, but she had never done anything weightlifting associated in her life, but she was still fit in her own way. Um, age, so 35 to 54 is a totally different range than 55 and up. So 55 and up is what we consider our true masters athletes. So those are folks, the workouts are adjusted a little bit differently on a competitive level. Of course, we adjust every workout, but like when it comes to competition. Um, and then also mindset wise, do you feel limited by your age? Because we all know age is just a number, but sometimes we feel a little bit older in our heads than we do in our bodies. So it's important that we understand age both physically, but also emotionally and mentally as well. And then injury state. Some of us have lived some quite adventurous lives. So if you have an injury, if you're prone to injury, car accidents, things like that, do you have an underlying disease such as a heart condition or maybe rheumatoid arthritis? Those things are important for us to know so that we can adjust the workouts accordingly and set some reasonable goals that make sense, okay? But when it comes to creating goals and staying motivated, if you don't have a target to what you're working towards, it makes it really hard to come in here and work hard every day. I get that. Okay, so if you want more help on this, I think the next one I'm gonna do is a little bit more targeted towards that. But at our dinner, you guys had mentioned wanting to talk a little bit more about what that looks like. So your homework is to think about moving forward, what is it that you want out of this space? And it's okay if you don't care to win and you just wanna be here for the social part and get a good workout, that's an awesome goal. But be realistic, okay? If you're like, I wanna compete, it's gonna take a lot of work. And that's okay, I'm here to help you guys. Okay, um, next thing we're gonna talk about is common myth, oh, well, actually, rewind, back to this. Um, there are 16 archetypes of these four quadrants, so four times four is 16, um, and there's like tons of pages on it, so we got performance, early, fit, uninjured, performance, early, fit, injured, all the way down the line. I can go on and on about this, but if this is something you wanna talk about and you wanna do some goal setting, just let me know. Like I'm trying to free up my schedule a little bit more so I'm here for you guys more often um, in a different capacity instead of just being on the floor like a chicken with my head cut off, okay? If you guys are like, hey, I wanna do a goal setting session on a Saturday, we'll break it down, 8.30, get some coffee and bagels and we'll do an interactive goal setting seminar where we just talk about what we need to do to move forward, okay? So some key principles for coaching regardless of where you were in the master's quadrant. If you're injured, we gotta resolve whatever you got going on, okay? You can't work through nagging injuries. We can try to modify through them, and a lot of you guys have been really good about that, um, but that is the highest priority, is managing that injury and then finding ways around it to keep your training still functional and in line with your long-term goals. Late master, so 55 and up, should have loads reduced and in some cases, movement modified. So in our competitive athletes who are 55 and up, they naturally will adjust the movements. Just know that handstand push-ups are probably not a thing, and that's cool. Like, there's no reason to be upside down. It's not a functional movement once you're over 55. <laughs> Might be fun as shit, but it's just not functional. And if you wanna learn, I'm happy to teach you guys, but we gotta work our way there, okay? A deconditioned master's athlete, so someone who has not been active, should be much more scaled and conservative, conservatively introduced to the program more gradually than a younger, unconditioned athlete. That's why we do that on ramp program. So that's where we do our three half hour personal training sessions. That gives us as coaches an opportunity to get to know you and get to know where you're at and see if it's a good fit to put you in a class after you finish your on ramp or if you need a little bit more one on one to work through some things. Right now I'm working with a 74 year old twice a week in the mornings. She came in wanting to join class. We went through her first two sessions of on ramp and she was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna stay in personal training. That's okay, that's what we're here for. And not all of our personal training is CrossFit. Right now we're working on getting her stepping up on a curb. That's a big deal for her, okay? And we sometimes take that for granted as athletes. And then wellness athletes need a broad stimulus to in order to achieve a broad fitness adaptation. So those of you who are here who wanna just be well, you guys need an exposure to all the things still. Um, but you also need to be here more regularly. Because we're working with lesser loads and lesser intensity, that means that we need to be more consistent in our training. So Karen, you do a really good job about that. She comes in, she works hard in the workout, and then she stays after and usually does extra. 
And so that's what keeps you fit as an older athlete. And then um, programming for performance athletes should be specific towards their specific goals and competitions. So that's a little bit different, but if you're like, hey, you know, I wanna go for Wadapalooza this year, what do I need to do? You need to schedule a separate session and talk about your programming and what that looks like, okay? Any questions so far? All right, so, oh, that's a good one. I love the master's guide. Like this was my favorite guide to actually study this in the kids, which I did not think, not anything against master's athletes, but I didn't realize how much information was in here that's really pertinent to what we do every day. So the psychological effects of aging, hormonal changes such as reduction of testosterone in men and um, estrogen and progesterone in women, immune system changes, bone density changes, muscular skeletal changes, reduced stamina, but neurologically speaking, a lot of people get vertigo the older they get. And so sensory perceptual changes, neurological capacity impairments, things like that, it's important. All those things we can improve here. Lifting weights helps improve your hormonal balance, okay? Um, perception, like changing direction, burpees are really good in terms of training, training your, um, your oh my gosh, vestibular system. Um, but I do want to get into the common myths and misconceptions about aging. So, number one, older athletes cannot get stronger or improve their physical capacity. That is not true, okay? Um, the research into master's athletes is limited, but there are a few quality studies when this guide was written that are notable. So, where master's athletes have been studied, the research is often confounded by a focus on endurance athletes. Endurance does suffer a little bit as you age but your strength, you can still build. There is a lady, her name is Jennifer Thompson. She's like 54. She breaks her own record every like three years. The lady can bench, bench three, <laughs> 365 with a pause, guys. And she's had two kids and has lived this whole life, <coughs> but she's still getting stronger and beating her records from her 20s and 30s. Isn't that wild? It's crazy. You should look her up. She's really cool. Um, but um, and to, there's some empirical evidence in terms of CrossFit. So in 2011, 41-year-old Matt, Matt Swift, he cleaned, or I'm sorry, thrust her 245 at the regionals event. Four, year, four years later, as a 46-year-old, he did a 30-pound PR, okay? 30 pounds in his 40s. It is doable, okay? And if you ever, the games are coming up. They're going to run Helen, they're going to run a 5K, and they're going to run... Uh, Olympic total. I'm curious to see how those athletes stack against athletes in the open division. It's going to be cool. So you guys should look at that and see and be inspired. Um, myth number two, older athletes should not train intensely. That's also a myth, okay? Everything is in moderation, but intensity is, por in, is important because it is the independent variable most commonly associated with maximizing the rate of return of favorable adaptation. AKA, if you're not training with intensity, you are reducing significantly the ability to create work, to generate power within your workouts. And that applies to all of you. So the more intensity you bring with your workouts, like exponentially, the higher your returns are as an athlete, okay? Um, relative intensity is defined as working to the boundary of physical and psychological tolerance and not beyond. A lot of it is in here, okay? It's, in, it's in okay to be uncomfortable. I don't want you guys to push to pain, but you should be in here like, that was hard. If you're walking around going, maybe we add a second workout, so that's where we add intensity by creating more work for you guys. Um, or we talk about why we can't push in a workout, okay? Um, let's see, older athletes need a segmented program that is simpler and has reduced skill or demand. Not a fan of that either. So just because you're a master's athlete doesn't mean you can't have the opportunity to learn or work hard, right? You should be treated like any other athlete here. Obviously, if we have injuries, like especially in yesterday's workout where we had snatches, that's not gonna be conducive to someone's long-term goals. But guess what? We can write a workout with intensity that's gonna allow you guys to still get a great workout in and still learn some skills, okay? Myth number four is that older athletes can't train hard because they have a diminished ability to recover, okay? 
By recovery, we mean the ability to return to a pre-exertion state within that same training session, as well as the ability to overcome the effects of fatigue between training sessions. So there is a consistent decline in VO2 max when you hit 70. Okay, most of us here are, if we're close, we're close, we might be in there. But uh, <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, I was, I'm thinking about who's in this group. Um, but in sedentary masters, the diminished recovery is significant and it occurs much earlier. So if you're a sedentary athlete in your 40s and 50s, your shit's gonna go downhill way faster than somebody who hasn't been active. That is so important and that's why we're here, okay? Um, the key point is that, is that it is convenient for aging athletes to blame poor recovery on their age before accepting that they are recovering in other places like de-stressing, getting massages, practicing active recovery techniques, taking a rest day once in a while is okay. All right, and that's gonna lead us into this poor recovery feedback loop, okay? This applies to everybody, including myself, and I'm kind of getting on the tail end of having some sinus issues over the last couple days, so I feel this. There's a system, a belief system, then you delay your recovery, then you have lack of focus or effort in that area, and then you get poor, poor recovery, so you're not performing well in here, and then it just keeps looping over and over and over again. Ultimately, I'm here to help you guys, but this is your journey. I can only do so much for you. Right? And I can lead a horse to water, but if you guys aren't doing the things, the things aren't gonna happen for you. So, we accept that there are age-based biological changes that can inhibit recovery at a metabolic level. Okay, so that means like, if you're not eating well enough, of course you're gonna feel like crap. That's any, anybody, okay? Um, aging athletes can work hard, but to do so and recover, they need to do everything within regard to reco recovery strateg strategies. Whereas a younger athlete can possibly tolerate a poor lifestyle and still recover, an older athlete cannot. I'm telling you, in my early 20s, I used to be able to go out all night, come in, not even freaking warm up, smash a PR on my cleaning jerk, and then go out that night and drink, and it'd be fine. I can't do that anymore. Man, I had one bad meal at Mojo's. I was sick all weekend at practice. So as you guys get older, you have to realize how much of an influence your lifestyle change or your lifestyle choices and your nutrition choices make in terms of your recovery. Um, where an athlete is doing everything right, okay, but still failing to recover, it would indicate that training volume has not been appropriately scaled. So before, if you guys are like, I'm super sore, everything sucks, I'm miserable, I'm overtraining, let's check all the other shit first make sure that we're on point with our recovery, and then we talk about modifying your volume, okay? So, um, that feedback loop, they don't have it here. Um, if you guys are not, there's two different things. If you're not seeing results, right, we look at, are you hitting the right intensity here, right? Are you scaling appropriately? So that's where those time caps exist. If you guys are constantly time capping, okay, that's a problem. But there's also a problem where you're finishing too soon. Let's say you're overscaling the workout. You're lacking that intensity. You're gonna stagnate, all right? If you're not eating properly, workout nutrition is important, okay? One bad meal, hmm. Constant bad meals every week, hmm. If you're constantly not eating at all, that's even worse. For most people, most of my clients who do nutrition, they're either not eating regularly throughout the day and then they eat one big shitty meal and then they're like, wow, I feel like crap or they're regularly inconsistent in what they're eating. So they'll eat good for two days and then have a binge day and then go out drinking. Like nutrition as a whole should be something that's doable on a, on a daily basis. There's gonna be days. I'm gonna be the first to tell you, I love to get a beer on a Saturday. That's like where I'm at, okay? But the rest of my week is pretty darn good. So if you guys are not seeing results, that's a place to look at instead of saying, well, I'm old and this is just how it is, okay? Other things, are you sleeping enough? Your body cannot recover if you're not sleeping enough. That's where your hormone levels reset. It allows your body to rebuild muscle. It lets you, um, it kind of cleanses your cognitive system, your central nervous system. So if you're not prioritizing sleep, and that number's different for everybody. It could be eight to 12 hours, it just depends, okay? Naps are okay. I take naps all the time when I can. But if you're not prioritizing your sleep and you don't have good sleep hygiene or routines, that's gonna affect your recovery significantly. Other things, 
joy and hobby. So a lot of you guys, this is your joy and hobby, which is really cool, but you also need to spend time outside in nature, okay? Away from your cell phones, away from technology, and really be able to reset and ground yourselves. Um, that also aids in recovery, managing your stress levels. We don't really talk about this a lot, but mental health is really important. I had the opportunity, and actually she's a, a friend of mine, we actually talk fairly often. Um, Christina Migliala out of CrossFit Tailwinds, she does the Mental Fit program. Um, and so what they have done at CrossFit Tailwinds is she is a psychologist, something like that, something in the mental health profession. Um, and she has incorporated CrossFit and mental health in one, okay? Super cool, I wish I could do that here, but I'm not a psychologist. Sometimes I'm like a makeshift therapist and that's okay. But um, you guys have to take care of what's in between the ears, right? And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to go to therapy. I'm the first one to say, I, I love therapy. Um, but making sure that you guys are doing that is really important. A lot of you guys have very stressful jobs or home lifestyles and things like that. Being able to take care of yourself is important and that means also what's in between the ears, okay? And then I think that's all of the, the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. But as a master's athlete, right? Or as somebody who's maybe older and trying to come back into fitness, like it is possible. Our goal here, we have a great staff here, is to help you guys get there safely. We learn technique with consistency and then we add intensity, right? And when we follow that formula, you guys will get the results. Like I'm gonna brag on Caitlin a little bit. So like when Caitlin started here, uh, she was a super good student, never done CrossFit before. She took the time to learn the technique. She had an injury, took some time off, came back. Yesterday, she more than tripled her squat snatch and it was beautiful. So like, but again, like that was following the formula, right? So just know like when we're on you guys about your technique, there's a reason for it. And if you follow the plan, you will get where you need to get to. Okay, um, do you guys have any questions? Anything that I can answer for you? No, but I do have something to say. When you sure. get older, when you're young, your bones support your muscles, but as we get older, our muscles have to support our bones. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I come all the time. Yeah, because Miss Karen's the bomb.com. I'm like, you gonna be here tomorrow? <laughs> but it's true. Like that's osteoporosis true. is a real thing. Um, once upon a time, like there was somebody that I knew who was a first responder and one of the most common injuries that he would get a call for was falls. Right. If you go into the hospital for falling, your prognosis to come out is not good, okay? And so, like, it's really, if falls, they happen. The tools that you learn here is gonna help you so that if you were to fall, hopefully you can get up. If not, if you break something, because, you know, it does happen, you will be able to recover a lot better being in the hospital after a broken hip, that's like a death sentence right there. So it is, it's legit, right, Caitlin? I know you know because you see it all the time. I um, work in a rehab and I Yeah, see it all same the thing. Time. So like it's you're creating a hedge of actually this is the fitness wellness. So we have unwell. Or this is sickness actually. Sorry. Sickness wellness. Fitness. A lot of people live here or like somewhere here. But let's say you get sick, right? Or you take a fall or you take a tumble, you edge closer this way. But if you live in wellness and you take a fall or a tumble or you get sick or whatever, there's a little hedge here so that you're not all the way over here, okay? And the closer you get to fitness, so let's say you live here. So you're pretty fit, you come in like, I'm gonna use Karen as an example. She comes in five days a week. God forbid something happens to Karen. She's out for a couple days, she's here. She'll be all right, right? But unlike somebody who maybe is living here, if they get sick, they're out for three to four weeks and they're all the way over here. So it's important that we continue to push towards this fitness, not just because we wanna be competitive, but because we wanna create a hedge against illness, okay? So thank you for sharing that, Karen. Anything else for you guys? Yeah, don't get old. <laughs> I wanna be old, I plan on, that means I, Listen, there's lots Actually, of options. the alternative is not too good. Exactly. Yeah, right? exactly. So, like, the goal is to get people, even in their older years, to move better than they did in their younger years. So, like, Mike, you're also one of my, like, poster children. Used to walk with a cane. 
Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy. If I sat on the floor, I couldn't get up from yeah. a lot of friends helping me. Yep. Um, or I don't know if you guys remember Marshall. He still trains here, but he does personal training with um, Christine, who's our physical therapist. Marshall is a man in his late 60s. Uh, he wanted to surf again. We're, oh, he's a badass surfer. You guys have no idea. He surfed all over the world in his early 20s and 30s. Um, and then like took some time off and his one goal was to get back on the surfboard. He could not do a burpee. He is back to surfing, which is, it gives me goosebumps, it's the coolest. When I see him on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, I ask him how his last surfing trip went. Like the joy that that brings him, the ability to do the things that he wants to do as a 67 year old, getting out in the freaking ocean surfing, that's badass. Or Mike on the saddle riding, if you've never seen him on Cash or Irish, um, that shit's scary, bro. That's intense. Yvonne too, she's a horseback rider. Uh, did you already turn? Your birthday was the other day. It is. You are the big five zero. I am five zero. Yeah. Oh. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> but you're probably the thinnest you've ever been in your life, right? More fit than my forties. Yeah. Crazy, right? So it is possible. There are gains that can be made even in your forties, fifties, sixties, and beyond. But if you guys enjoyed today, beyond is possible. Beyond is possible. We have a lot of beyonds. Love you guys. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, and if you guys get a chance to watch the CrossFit Games, they have a 70 and up division. They're badass. They're so cool. That's where I want to be when I get older, right? <laughs> That's a real goal. Mark, you can still make your 70s plus, bro. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys for coming still today. Um, plenty of bagels. Help yourself. Whatever's left over, you guys can take home. I don't need the extra carbs. Avon, thank you for joining. Have fun riding today. And thank you guys for joining us today. It was really nice. And I think I have a meeting with you guys. I'll, I gotta check my phone, but Tuesday, Tuesday yep. Mm -hmm. Before class. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. That was great. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs>